Will she be coming back into work? Hello everyone! <laughs> I'm really worried no one was going to win it then. How are we all? Lovely people. It is another update video today and this one is possibly the most requested one because it's a teddy bear update and also of course, a little Brago, because they're a duo now. And don't you worry, I'm gonna be answering the most asked question, which I've had, I think, literally since I announced that Bear was never full. in such a good mood. Uh, which is, what is gonna be happening to her next? Will she be coming back into work? So I did a post on Instagram asking for questions about Teddy Bear and Brago, so I'm gonna go off of that and we're just gonna jump straight in and just just update you guys. I'm gonna update you so good. Brago, that is my foot. That's my hoof. Good boy. So surprisingly, I had quite a few people just wanting a little brief history of Ted. Now, I feel like I've told this story till I'm blue in the face. However, I forget that new people subscribe. Oh, on that note, if you could hit subscribe, it would really help me. Just the way that Bear hit my bun there, that'd be fantastic. So, to cut a long story short, I was away at university and we saw Bear on Facebook from a lady that we kind of knew in the area that did a bit of dealing. And previously we'd seen other ones on her page that we loved and they'd sold really quickly before we'd had a chance to see them. So when we saw Bear pop up, mum sent me a Facebook message and I was like, already seen the ad, I'm in, I really like her. And mum basically just messaged her and was like, yep, yeah, I'll come and pick her up tomorrow. I think that was way back in the day where we didn't even get vettings. Although to be fair, Bear, you were very much a project at the time. So she was pretty cheap, especially if you're looking at horses in today's climate, like I am. So yeah, we just bought her, so we'd have her, bought her home and you were, spicy she had been i think passed around a little bit before we had her she'd been through the sales and things and so she was actually quite like poor it was going into winter so we just were like ah oh, like let's feed this pony up i was away at uni so i wasn't riding her too much so we basically just got her looking nice and fat and happy and that was probably where we first went wrong because once bear was fat and happy she was a little bit too happy she was um yeah, spicy is the best way to describe her. And I'm sure you guys will know that, having known Bear for the past five years that I've been vlogging her. Oh. Oh, I'm gone. Oh, Sit up! Sit up! She's a spirited young lady, so there were some very hairy moments when we first had her. Unfortunately, so many of these aren't on video because it was back before the days of vlogging and also before the days of like sharing everything on social media. So when I'd take her into an arena and she would rear bolt upright or like gallop away from me, I used to have to lunge her before I'd get on her because she was so fresh. Didn't tend to video it, but in hindsight, I wish I had. So she was kind of like any other project that we had, to be honest. We kind of thought we'll do a bit of venting with her. Because she was quite tricky and sharp, we knew that she wasn't gonna be a quick sell. So if I'm dancing around, Brago's like nipping at my calves, like one of those little fish that you, you know when you're gonna get your dead skin eaten off? He's like one of them aren't you? You're weird. So we figured that we actually had to get a competition record for this pony. Like she had to be a competition pony. She wasn't going to be a hack or a kid's pony, which was fantastic because it meant I had an excuse to produce her. We quickly discovered that she had the most amazing jump. I actually loose jumped her fairly soon after we'd got her, probably like a month or six weeks. Sorry guys, this is quite a while ago we're talking now, but what would it have been? Maybe 2016, I want to say 2016. Everyone agree it was 2016. Winnie, you weren't even born. You're live. Yeah, 2016, I think. So memory is potentially a little bit fuzzy because it was obviously a while ago, but the things I remember was spicy, fantastic jump, 
and very entertaining dressage scores. I remember my, I think it was my first event with, with her, the judge actually got out of her car at the end and was like, you've got a very sassy pony there. Like she's very opinionated. We got a very high mark, like very high 30s or in the 40s. I can't quite remember, but we always knew that she was gonna be super talented and I was quickly falling in love with her. And it was one of those, like we had quite a few people that wanted to buy her, to be honest. And I kept being like, no, mum, like she's not ready. Like I really, I really don't think a kid could ride her right now. Um, so I kept kind of pushing it and pushing it to the next point until we pretty much got to the end of the event season. And she was going really well. She actually won one of her events at Swaycliff. And so I was kind of like, well, why don't we just keep her till next year and get her a B record? So did a winter of training and then got her out BE. And she started to really come into her own. Like the dressage judges absolutely loved her once she started concentrating. And although her jumping was a little bit ropey because she required so much like leg and encouragement, like you had to give it 110% over every single fence. Otherwise she was gonna be like, ah, uh -uh, not doing it. But she was getting some really good results. And then we ended up getting a regional final qualifier at off church. See, eventing history, I just know, I can just remember all the places. So then I was like, well, come on, I'm like, I've been chasing this badminton dream for so long. Admittedly, it was on DNR that I was chasing it. Uh, but I was like, can I please just take, just take Bear to the qualifier? Like, there's no way she's gonna qualify for badminton. We can sell her after that and we can be like, look, like grassroots potential, you know. Real good sales pitch, mum ate it out of the palm of my hand. So I entered her for Western Lawns regional final and Bear only went and won it like a little legend. Like she was so epic and it was a beefy course to be fair. So that obviously qualified us for badminton, AKA Bear was then definitely not gonna be for sale at the end of that season. So then, that's kind of where I picked you guys up. You can go back through all the catalogs of my videos and follow Bear's history pretty well from that point. But she's actually the reason I started vlogging. This, this foal is literally lifting my leg up. Can you see my leg there? He's got my, got my mountain horse boot. Ow, ow, Brago, Brago babe. Naughty. You you need to stop biting my legs. You need to stop that. I know you're doing it gently, but we're not doing you yet. Your history hasn't begun at this point. So yes, Teddy is pretty much the reason I started vlogging because we qualify for badders and then I wanted to get help from sponsors because I was still at uni and still very much in debt and a very low budget for entries. Then of course we went to badminton and I went flat. <laughs> you guys will have to go watch that video if you want the full debrief from that. But that was kind of the time that we started thinking, although I did event there after that, we were like, Phew. the atmosphere really takes it out of you at big events. So we did carry on doing some bits and she actually got some epic results. She went on and won a couple of BEs after that. But it was kind of getting a little bit more stressful to take her out, to be perfectly honest, because she would just get very kind of anxious mostly in the warm-up rings like once she was actually competing golden but it was just the warm-up rings that we were like god this is getting a bit stressful and i was also a lot more ballsy back then if we're if we're being frank and i was kind of thinking like no i want to definitely be doing more hundreds and then some more fives and maybe go like to novice so we kind of got into a bit of a position where we sort of had to think about what we were going to do because I felt I was too sort of top heavy on Bear to be able to take her. We did do 100, but I definitely wasn't gonna be able to take her further than that. That combined with the fact that she was starting to get a little bit stressy out eventing, and although like the lower key events she was doing pretty well at, obviously badminton is always like an end goal for me. And we kind of thought you're probably not gonna be up to going to Badders because the atmosphere there is just wild, as you know. So it was a tricky decision of, do we keep her? And like either I go down the dressage route with her or like just stay eventing at lower levels, but I quite like being able to like achieve goals and stuff. Do we sell her to a dressage home? 
I, I still didn't think she would be suitable for a child even to go around 80s to be honest because she's just bare you just don't know when she's gonna like do a gigantic jump or like suddenly need loads and loads of encouragement to get over a fence or did we want to have a baby and naturally guys i went for option c option c was definitely the best one wasn't it brago I am breaking that in. Many of you will know that little darling Brago was not actually the first time we tried to get Bear in foal. So we had her inseminated and scanned in foal to Ron, also known as Britannia Royal. And then we had the awful scenario where she absorbed the embryo after her final scan. Um, yeah, there, there's videos of all of this, guys, and finding out, and it was like a really, really tough and difficult time. So we kind of had to make a bit of a decision, again, so many decisions to be made, as to what to do. And we obviously consulted a lot with our vet and with Sharon, who is just the most knowledgeable person that we know when it comes to breeding. And we kind of came to the conclusion that because Bear was a maiden mare, her body like wasn't as geared up for having foals. I know it sounds really silly, but if you speak to a lot of vets, they'll um, they'll agree that it's harder to get maiden mares in foal. I know I I personally personally don't think that's good for my hair. Actually, mate, let's I'm just gonna redo my hair quick. A few moments later. Go on, look like I'm about to do ballet. It's from a ballet band. So yeah, after some more kind of tests and investigations we realized or found out that the extenders that they put in the stallion's product to basically keep it alive from where it was traveling bear was having like a little bit of a reaction to that and then it was all all kind of going wrong inside so essentially we needed the freshest produce that we could find to kind of kick start bear's body get her to have her first foal and then hopefully it would be easier going forward and that is where this little man came in. So he is out of Don Dante, who stands at New Barn Stud. Gorgeous dressage stallion who we've actually known since I think he was like a year old, like tiny, tiny. We've known him for years and years and years. Always really loved him. But obviously we were like, oh no, like I want an eventing stallion. But we've considered putting many mares to him over the years and it never added up like the timings had just never been right with each mare we had and one thing after another you know, you know what it's like so when Sharon suggested him because she could stand him right there and put it straight into bear it was out of Dante into bear in like a minute which is what she needed and we were going to struggle to get that anywhere else unless it was a like natural covering which we didn't really want to do with bear because we thought it might stress her out and she might get hurt so basically all of the stars aligned and we were like yeah absolutely this is the best thing to do and it was very successful she scanned in foal first time and we got the most gorgeous foal out of it which brings me on to the section of Brago's update! It's finally all about you. You can have all the scratches now. Sorry, that was the longest answer to the first question, which I guess is the history of Bear. But let's go on to question number two. And the thing that you guys all wanted to know about little Brago was how are his legs doing? Because when he came out, he was quite folded up. Contracted is a better word to use. His tendons were contracted. So he had kind of bendy front legs. Looking back at footage and pictures, I really notice it now, but when he first came out, it's obviously just like the buzz of having a healthy foal and you just can't see any faults in them. But now I can really see how bendy they were, but I'm very pleased to report after he had the muscle relaxant and then we had to do some walking, she had to kind of like 
exercise him, basically keep him walking in the field. His legs are actually looking so, so good. And we had the vet here the other day just to double check him, make sure that she's happy with him. And yeah, Hattie was thrilled with him. It says that they're looking just like normal, which is exactly what we want. So he had his first trim with the farrier the other day. Again, farrier, super happy. I can't stress enough how important it is to get professionals' opinions on things. I know you can do loads of reading and comparing and things like that online, but we've been very, well, we are very lucky to be surrounded by amazing professionals in like loads of different spheres. And yeah, it's been really nice to kind of have a bit of to and fro conversation with them all. But the end answer is that his legs are looking fantastic. They are no longer a problem. Will we be keeping Brago or will Brago be for sale? And if he keeps, no. Right, he's for sale, he's for sale. Sold. Sold to the highest bidder. He's sold. That is naughty. So hard, guys, you need, ah, 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 ah. That's me trying to discipline a fold. Initially, when we first put Vera Fold Dante, we were like, let's be sensible, like, We'll sell this foal and then we'll have our eventing foal and that will be that. And then Bear birthed the most gorgeous foal to ever grace this planet. And I'm gonna really struggle to part with him now. I absolutely adore him. He's got the most gorgeous personality. He's so kind, other than when it comes to hairdressing. He moves beautifully. He's got the most perfect markings. And yeah, I am honestly just a little bit too in love to want to sell him. So my plan is for you to make 15 to Brago. Have you got that? And then I would definitely like to keep him to the point of like breaking in and riding and just kind of see, see what he likes. And also to be perfectly honest guys, see what I like in five years time. I might fancy being a little bit more of a dressage diva then, in which case like what a smart and fancy horse to have. Like I definitely wouldn't be able to afford to buy him as a five year old. So it kind of makes sense to, um, to keep him. Saying that, you know, he might not make big enough. So the height would be the only thing that would get in the way of whether we kept him or not. But you know, if that lottery win does come in, then I will just be keeping him and letting a very lucky follower have the ride on him. So uh, yeah, just comment down below guys, or you know, send me lottery tickets. Teddy, it's back to you. So one of the questions I got was, why didn't we ride Bear during her pregnancy with Brago? Because obviously we're riding Dee now while she's pregnant, and it's really good to ride them just to keep them fitter, keep their stomach muscles like, Hattie said the other day, and I loved it, she was like, giving birth is an Olympic sport. So you want them like a little bit fit and together. Sorry, we've got a bit of an angry bear now because Brago is feeding. And Brago's got big teeth now, hasn't he? So sometimes he accidentally nips you. So the first time she was pregnant, oh God, you need a bath. <laughs> we did actually ride her and keep her going. But the second time, she was already down at Sharon's. So we got Sharon to get her in foal for us. And then we kept her there until after the point that she lost the first embryo because we were just really worried that she was gonna lose one around the same time. And we also didn't want to travel her back in like the early stages, just in case she got stressed. Like she's such a good traveler, but you just never know if they're gonna get stressed. And then that could be the cause of them losing the embryo. So we decided that because it had been such a long time since she'd been in work, by the time we got her home, it probably wasn't the best move to then try and bring her back into work. Like she'd never had that long a break before. So we didn't know if she was gonna be, she's trying to groom me. Bear, it's fine, it's fine. I don't mind just doing this for you. You don't have to give it back. Um, yeah, we didn't know if she'd be a bit of a nutcase and again, then be stressed. So that is why we decided like, let's just, not, sorry, that's really gross. Let's not upset the rhythm. Let's not rock the boat, hey bear, and just to keep you happy and in that little routine. So you've ended up having an incredibly long time off. And my word, can you tell by the size of her stomach? She looks like she has potentially still got another foal in there. It's just 
absolutely ridiculous. You'd expect a mare that was feeding to kind of be dropping off a bit of weight by now, but not bad. She's always been an incredibly good doer and she is, uh, she's keeping up with that trend. When will you wean them? So there's lots of different opinions out there about weaning, about how you, could, how you should do it, whether you should do it like fast, slow. I think I spoke about this briefly with Etty. General consensus is that they must be a minimum of six months, which would take you, well, take this one, I think to kind of like end of December, early January time. So we're obviously definitely gonna leave it to that point, but we do tend to keep them on a little bit longer. So we're thinking we'll probably do him, do them, end of January, early February, but it's weather dependent. If we get hideous weather, they'll stay with their mummies a little bit longer. Hey? Mwah. Oh, and one other question I had about Brago was, will you be keeping him entire, AKA as a stallion? And as much as I would love to, because I think he would, well, I think he is gonna be a really, really special, smart horse. Um, we won't be. We've got too many mares to have stallions here, so unfortunately he will be gelded before he even has a chance to have any um, like straws taken off of him. Okay guys, I feel like we have arrived at all important question. It's time. The question that you have all been waiting for. What is going to happen to Teddy Bear after weaning? So, I still have my covering from Ron, Britannia Royal, and I still think that they are going to be a match made in heaven. I think they'll make really gorgeous babies and he's more thoroughbred than Dante was. He's obviously an inventor. I'm not saying anything bad about you, don't worry. So yeah, I did pick him for a reason in the first place and I would still really, really like to have a Bear and Ron baby. So we are definitely going to try and put Teddy Bear back in foal with Ron and yeah, have another fall from her, which is super duper exciting. And she's just been the best mum. I genuinely, I can't fault her. She's like Millie was basically just really easy. Absolutely adores Brago and has completely and utterly loved it. So yeah, she is going to, I'm gonna say attempt because you know, we all know that it doesn't necessarily always go to plan. So hopefully there will be another little fall coming. But there's a bit of a twist, guys, because what are we now? We are September and Bear has not been put back in foal this year. And like I just mentioned, Brago is gonna be weaned in, I don't know, you know, January, February kind of time. And that does leave me with a little gap between Brago being taken off of her and her having to go back to Sharon's to be put in foal. And seeing as she is pretty fat and that I really, really miss riding her, like oh, nothing is the same as jumping Bear. I'm very, very, very excited to announce that Bear is going to be coming back into work for a short period of time early next year and we're just gonna have a load of fun together. Obviously, this is all going to be vlogged. My first ride back on Bear after two years off is going to be vlogged. So uh, again, guys, hit that subscribe button, press the bell. You're not gonna wanna miss when that video drops because I think it's going to be quite an exciting one. The plan is just gonna be to have loads of fun with her, get her fit again, get rid of this belly, get her in a good kind of physique to be put back in foal. You know, you don't want mares too fat or too fit to get in foal. There's like a really happy medium, but Bear is definitely too overweight right now to be put in foal. So more than anything, this is like a very good thing to do for her health, but also it's a good thing to do for me. I just absolutely cannot wait. And I think bizarrely, she's gonna be a real confidence booster for me because she does require 
a very confident rider and someone that makes decisions. Like she is just, she's one of those horses that wants to be led. Like she wants me to be a herd leader when I'm up there. There's none of this like, oh, 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 you make the decision like I do with poor Jammy. It's 100% up to me. And I think that's potentially what I've been lacking these last few years is a, a horse that makes me be like, no, I can do this. This is the right decision. We're going now. So I'm hoping that Jumping Bear is going to be really, really good for me. I am going to see how it goes. I'm going to see how she comes back into work. I'm thinking potentially she may have mellowed. I don't know if it's an old wife's tale, but many people say that having a foal from a mare like really settles the mare and just makes them a little bit more zen. Like a lot of people, if they have a bit of a tapped mare, um, have a foal from it and then supposedly the mare is like really settled. That might just be an age thing. Who knows? Don't quote me on that, guys. Don't go and put your crazy horses in fault. We shouldn't be breeding from super crazy horses. But potentially, she's going to come back just a little bit more chilled. And if that is the case, I'm thinking that maybe it wouldn't hurt to just go and do like one event, maybe, on her. Just a really low key, nothing big, like probably just an 80 or something. Oh, we could go to the Cotswold Cup. The Cot oh, that would be so much fun. So yeah, if Bear feels like she's happy to do so, I may try and take her to just one or two very early season events, just to make the memories, guys. Honestly, I love this horse so, so much. I mean, you're a pony, realistically, Bear Bear, aren't you? And yeah, it just feels like it would be a really fun thing to do. But I want to reiterate that ugh, all of this is going to be based around how Bear feels and just making sure that she's super happy. I don't want to do anything that's gonna stress her out. So if we think that taking her out competing is just gonna absolutely blow her brains and she's not gonna enjoy it, then we won't do it. But there is definitely going to be fun content coming your way from home for sure. Do you know what the best thing is? Is Pete wasn't a videographer, obviously when I was last riding there, but now he is. So we're for the first time ever going to be getting slow-mo footage of this crazy girl jumping again. So excited. Right guys, dinner time is probably a good place to end this update video. Sorry that it was incredibly long and chatty and storytelling like, but you guys keep telling me that you kind of like that style of video. So hopefully this will have satisfied your, your need to know about these two gorgeous horsies. But yeah, I hope you're as excited as I am. It's so funny because I was obviously so excited to announce when I was putting Bear and Foal, and now I'm so excited to announce that I'll be riding her again. But no, it is going to be short-lived. I'll just ride her until we're ready to send her off again to Sharon's to be put in foal, probably around May time. And then it will be back to being a mummy as her job. It's also nice that she's had a break from having babies. Like, obviously you can breed from them every year if you want to, but I think it's quite nice that we've had Brago and then she'll essentially have a year off from having a foal and then obviously the year after. Hopefully we are going to have a Ron baby. So excited. Anyway, I live, laugh, love you. I hope you enjoyed the updates. Like and subscribe if you wouldn't mind or if you enjoyed it. Don't worry if you do mind though, it's fine. Just, just keep coming back, I'll appreciate it. Right guys, I'll see you soon. Bye, have a greasy hand. To say these guys are similar is, uh, they're brilliant, thanks, Bear. Steamy.